Back to work. Vacation's over. Welcome back to the channel guys and happy new year. You know every once in a while a product comes along that totally takes me by surprise. One such example, the Brocock Grand Prix S6 laminate. Check it out. For those of you that are unfamiliar, Brocock has been a major player in the air gun industry for over 25 years. Their products are synonymous with English quality, but at a more affordable price. The Grand Prix S6 is the first Brocock I've ever reviewed, and I was totally impressed with everything about it. It's Gary Kane laminated stock, Lothar Walther barrel, dual stage match grade trigger, and repeating action are everything you'd want in a high-end air pistol. In hand, the S6 conveys joy everywhere. The stock is comfortable and nicely weighted, and muzzle flip is minimal, both of which contribute to overall accuracy. And while it performed pretty well with these 1589s, it seemed to like the 1813s better. A pleasant surprise were the results of the 1343RS. Its lighter weight and improved velocity should flatten the trajectory, simplifying the aiming process out at greater distances. Pretty cool. I think five out of six of those went in the same 2 2 sized hole. Pretty impressive for an 18 foot pound pistol. So, right about now, my mind is switching gears, and I'm starting to look at the S6 as more of a hunter than a plinker. I'm thinking about things like maximum stopping power and pellet drop out around 50 yards. Each of which we'll address in a few moments. But for now, let's focus on these polymag shorts. They fit in the Brocox magazine, 
and they're going down range with deadly accuracy. This gun is badass. All right, we're in full hunter mindset now. And I'm thinking about a pellet that won't drop much at greater distances. This lead-free GTO by Predator fits the bill nicely, but will it prove accurate? And if it does, can it get the job done out around 50 yards too? But we'll come back to that. What a dagger. I can't tell you how large the S6's reservoir is, but what I can tell you is that it's made out of aluminum and Brokock says its valve is self-regulating. I think by this they mean that it's tuned, rather than using a separate mechanical regulator. Quick Connect Foster fittings make filling the S6 a breeze, and due to its smaller reservoir, make it a good candidate for filling with a hand pump as well. The S6's reservoir is refillable to 200 bar, but if I were to own this gun, I'd probably recharge it to about 185 bar, shoot two magazines, and refill. By doing so, I'm increasing my overall average velocity, as well as flattening the trajectory for use out past 50 yards. If I were to be able to keep the S6 for myself, these are the three pellets that I'd be most interested in. On the lighter side, they'll keep velocity up and drop down, playing to the strengths of this long range pistol hunter. Whichever you choose, there's plenty of power here to take larger game like Fox and Coyote. And when maximum shock is preferred over penetration, I might suggest something like the Polymag Short. On the topic of power and penetration, check this out and you'll know what I mean.
The S6's extra wide trigger blade is dual stage and it's adjustable. Throughout testing, I left it at the factory setting of just about three and a half pounds. I found it to be well mannered and to perfectly complement this style of gun. I'm not sure what Brocock's up to, but that plunger on the back of the trigger blade pressing up against the sear makes the S6's trigger seem a lot lighter than it actually is. And it possesses all the elegance you'd want in a high-end air gun. Bottom line, this is an excellent trigger, and it's on par with those costing more than twice as much. Despite the S6 being without a moderator, it's actually not that loud. It's got a sound signature that's reminiscent of a 22 Magnum Springer or a loud nail gun. All right, enough of the routine blah blah blah. Here's where things get really interesting, at least for me. I publicly confess to being a proponent of two things. One, never shoot an air pistol past 25 yards, and two, don't ever fool with lead-free alloy. But as of today, I'm making an adjustment to my position on both. Having spent a few weeks with the Grand Prix, has taught me that there are air pistols that can be exceptional hunters out past 50 yards. It's also taught me that a lightweight and accurate round is key to making that practical. You see, point of aim is gonna be here, as sighted in at 25 yards. Making a two inch drop at 50, totally manageable with a duplex reticle pistol scope. By contrast, just a slightly heavier pellet, the 1343 JSBRSs are dropping almost four and a half inches when sighted in the same. And in case you're wondering, it didn't like him at 50 yards anyway, as you can see here. Sorry guys. Not sure what's going on with this misfeed, but this was my first and only issue in all my time with this pistol, so I'm labeling it an, 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 an anomaly. Wow! Need I say more? Who'd have thunk? Well, apparently so. Well, that's all for today, guys. And please don't forget, this episode wouldn't have been possible without the support of Air Guns of Arizona, Splatterburst Targets, and JSB Predator International and you know the best way to thank them. As for me, please be sure to like and subscribe and leave your comments below. And don't forget to check us out on Facebook for behind the scenes pictures and information. I'll share things here that won't make it into the videos, so you won't want to miss out. And lastly, for a special one-time opportunity to purchase the actual pistol used in the making of this video, get a hold of Air Guns of Arizona and let them know that you want to buy the pistol that Steve used in the making of the video. They'll give you 10% off and free freight. Then I'll clean it up, package it up, and drop ship it straight to you from here. AEAC certified. I'm Steve Shally. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again soon.